Tell that neighbor, I mean that. That is my testimony. Paul tells the church at Philippi in the first chapter in the sixth verse, he says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus the Christ. And I want to read from the New International Version this same verse because I believe that it speaks in the language that is really going to highlight my message on today and get this point across. It says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is blessed. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I look around this room, I see people from various backgrounds and from various stations and places in life. I believe that if all of us were to talk about our upbringings and our rearing and our childhood, it shouldn't surprise us that we've all come from kind of same humble beginnings, but different beginnings. Uh, some have come from dysfunctional homes and some have come from functional homes, but dysfunctional and functional still both were broke. So, so somewhat the same, but in many ways different, even in our sameness. I think one of the worst phrases that anybody could ever make is my life is over. For somebody to say that or to confess that or to throw that out into the atmosphere is a very dangerous thing because words have power and words have meaning. And I think one of the worst things that we can do is to confess or even place in the atmosphere that things are over for me. Because that statement is a statement of hopelessness. That statement is a statement of giving up, throwing in the towel, washing your hands, and now you're relegated to a place of stagnation. You're in a place where you don't expect anything. You're not looking forward to anything. And that's a rough place to be. That's a horrible outlook to have on life. An outlook that expects and sees I can understand and I can even imagine that there have been some things that have happened in your life that have caused you to believe that you will never recover. I can't imagine Daryl's 29 years behind prison bars. 29 years times 365 days. You do the math. That's a lot of going to sleep and waking up. And nothing has changed. I can only imagine some of you that have been in situations of crisis. You've had some things that have happened to you. You've had some situations that have found their way upon you. That may even have knocked you to your knees. May have even put you flat on your face. It may have you even feeling that my life is over. But we have to be careful about confessing that 
or even speaking that. I'm hearing something that's going on. Somebody take care of that. You have to be careful about confessing that. Speaking that. Because things that you put out in the atmosphere, they have to go somewhere. They don't just hover, but they find their way somewhere at some point in time. So it is in this thought, it is in this time in our lives that we have to do all we can to find a way to keep hope alive. Thank you, Jesse. Even when hope seems all but dead, find a way. Find some kind of resolve or energy, wherewithal, to even if it's just a flicker or a glimmer of hope, I'll take what I can get. But I never want to get to a place where I feel hopeless and feel that my life is over. After all, to add insult and injury to injury, it's horrible to even confess that over any length or period of time in your life. When God is waking you up every morning. If your life is over, if God has no purpose for you. If God is done with you, it would seem to me that he would take you. But if you're still here and you're still breathing and you're still waking up every day, you have to find some kind of strength to believe that God is not done with me. Oh, just tell that neighbor, God's not through with you. God is not through with you. God is not through with me. God's not through with her. God's not through with him. And you got to believe that. And I'm not even saying sometimes it doesn't get worse before it gets better. Be careful when you confess this is going to be the end of me. It might not even be the worst that you've experienced. I think that all of us as people of God, we have to live in some kind of hopeful world or hopeful environment or hopeful mentality that we have to believe that on our worst day God is able to bring me through it. In my most excruciating trial or test or temptation God is able to recover me. Now let's deal with the realities of life. We don't live with our head in the clouds. Pain is real. Hurt is real. Disappointment is sure enough real. Bad times seem to last always. But in reality, they don't last always. And you have to be careful when you magnify things beyond where they are. You have to begin to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I, I, listen, you have to begin to see the goodness of the Lord in the midst of rough times. Uh, you know, when we say God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, that ain't just a saying. You got to believe that thing. You, you got to believe that when you're bearing a loved one, God is still good. And I'm not saying that you haven't experienced some rough times. I'm not, I'm not saying that you haven't experienced some things that really messed with your mind. Had you at a place that you almost thought and believed you would never recover. Whatever that might be. It might be the loss of a loved one. It might be a disappointing relationship. That you were disappointed. You were let down. 
down, you were hurt, you felt that somebody abused and misused you, whatever, verbally or physically or all of that and more. But you got to believe that God is going to recover you. And let me say this. I don't minimize your pain because I don't know your pain. I don't make light of your hurt because I don't know your hurt. But I say to all of us, including myself, sometimes it is the fear of going through what we went through again that keeps us from trying to do better or trying to move forward. It's not that you can't move forward. It's you have that fear that what happened before is going to happen again. And that's a trick of the enemy. Because a lot of times, brothers and sisters, we give him more power and authority than he has. Uh, all right, all right, all right. We, we quote scriptures. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. We quote scriptures. Come on, y'all, y'all heard them. If God be for me, he's more than the world can be against me. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. We quote these scriptures. But if you really believe these scriptures then there's no way that you would lay down and drown when you can get up and swim. So then sometimes it's the fear of going through again and being hurt again that keeps you from moving forward. And let me tell you now, you can't let the pains of your past, you can't let the devastation of your past keep you from moving forward. You, listen, you got to some kind of way, some kind of how, you got to shake off what you've been through. You, you got to shake off that hurt. You got to shake off that pain you've been through. And listen, sometimes ain't nothing you can do about that. And listen, you can't wait on somebody to come and apologize to you because some people can walk over you and sleep like a baby and never give you another thought in their life. So you can't be waiting on people to release you. You got to release yourself and let God bring you to a place of restoration and healing so I cannot afford to let my past devastations keep me from moving forward I dare say that if we looked at the, at the success of many important people we would find out that they had some devastating past occurrences I don't believe that too many people just tried something one time and it just worked and it just became a multi-millionaire. I believe that some people, amen, they, they went bankrupt. Some people had to fail. Some people had to go through. Uh, I remember when Oprah Winfrey started her uh, own network, the Oprah Winfrey Network. Amen. She went through a rough time that first year, that first year and a half, and she said publicly, and I might not get all the numbers right, but she said publicly, we lost $170 million dollars. And she said, but we learned some lessons and we're going to retool and we're going to refigure this thing out. We're going to do some things different and we're coming back stronger than ever. Now, everybody can't afford to lose $170 million. That would wipe a whole lot of people out. They would be done. They would be cussing everybody out. They would be finished. It would be over. But Oprah said, no, no, no. We're going to learn from that and we're not going to, no, no, no. Well, you need to go back on TV with a show. No, 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 no. God has called me now to be behind the camera. God, God has called me not to be on a network but to control my own network and yeah we went through a rough time we took a licking but we're still ticking and we're getting ready to move forward and go again and now I'm watching Oprah's network more than women and I always called it a woman's network man you see that on man I don't watch no Oprah network man you know I, I don't read the Oprah magazine because I always thought it was women's and you know it was geared toward women but now I'm tuned into the own net I watch it almost as much as ESPN and I'm still where I need to be. Don't y'all play with me up in here. Sometimes it is the fear of failure that keeps you from moving forward. If I were to ask many of you that are in business, you would tell me, Bishop, I almost lost my shirt. And some of you say, I lost my shirt and my pants. 
but I got myself back together. I read too. It took me a while to get back, but now I'm doing better than I've ever done before in my life. And what a blessing that you didn't let that thing kill you. They didn't let that thing destroy your dreams and, and, and the vision that God had given you. What a blessing that you got back up, dusted yourself off, and got back in the game and moved forward. And now you learn from those lessons. It didn't kill you, but it built you. And you're doing better than you've ever done before. You ought to give yourselves a hand because the enemy tried to kill your dream. He tried to kill your aspirations. He tried to kill the things that you thought you would do in life. But he didn't get the victory because you got up and you moved forward. So yes, it is some devastating things that people have gone through and we all can share our past disappointments and our past hurts and our past failures. And those things that we thought would take us out and, just, and, and sucked almost all the energy that we had up out of us. But look, God has given you another day. God has given you another month. God has given you another year. God has given you another five years. And shame on you if you let the devil bring something in your life, a man that disappointed you, that hurt you, that devastated you, and it shuts you down for the rest of your life. You might have another 40 years to live. You're going to live 40 years talking about your life is over. Your life has got 40 more years. You better get up, dust yourself off, and start doing what God has called you to do by his strength. The word of God tells us it's in him that we live. It's in him that we move and it's in him that we have our being. So what I do, I'm doing in God. How I move, I'm moving in God. All of my being, that which makes me an active individual, I'm doing it in God. And if I'm doing it in God, the enemy can try to stop me and to block me, but the devil can't stop you, but he can devastate you until you will stop yourself. There are some things that can hurt you. There's some things that can make you cry for a little while. But you got to be able to dry your tears and get back up and get back in the fight. Tell that neighbor it ain't over, it ain't over. I can't even imagine what David went through when he and the men, the mighty men of valor, came back to their city Ziglag and the whole city was devastated. The enemies, I believe the Amalekites, had come in. They had burned down the city, had taken their wives and their children hostage. Can you imagine David and the mighty men of God? They're coming back. Uh, Pastor Brian, they were not at the casino. They were not at the club. They were not at the juke joint. I done told my age a juke joint, man. They still got two on each side. <laughs> They wasn't somewhere doing something they had no business doing. They were working for the Lord. They were working for the kingdom. They were out there protecting Israel. They were protecting the city and they were protecting the king. And while they are out protecting the people of God, the enemy comes into their city and takes everything they have and burn to the ground everything that, they, that, that, that belonged to them. Their possessions, their tents, their homes. I can only imagine. Here they come back tired, ready to see my wife, my children, my family, get me a good meal, and I come back to nothing but smoke and ashes. Looking for my honey, and look, looking for mama, looking for baby, and ain't nowhere around, looking for little junior, and ain't nobody around. What happened? The enemy has torn everything up you've had and taken away all your belongings, your people captive. Brothers and sisters, the Bible said David was depressed. The Bible said David was distressed. The Bible said David was getting, he, listen, the pity party, the invitations were being mailed out. Woe is me. I need somebody to come and cry with me. I need somebody to come and to mourn with me. I need somebody to come and to mourn with me. The Bible said David was in great distress. And then to add insult to injury, all the men that were with him and under his leadership, they were looking for somebody to blame. So they start pointing at it. It's your fault that my wife and my family 
family are taken captive and have been kidnapped. It's your fault. I ain't got a bed to sleep in. It's your fault. I ain't got a horse to ride. It's your fault. I don't have a place to sit. It's your fault. I don't have nothing to eat. And the Bible said when David started hearing that, he said, wait a minute. They trying to kill me. They trying to stone me. And that's the way it happens, brothers and sisters. When you start feeling sorry for yourself and getting down on yourself and thinking that your life is over, the devil says, oh, is that so? Well, let me bring a little more. Well, let me pile a little more. Let me finish you off. If you're trying to kill yourself, let me help you and let me take you on up out of here. Brothers and sisters, you got to see the goodness of the Lord even in the land of the living. You got to see the goodness of the Lord through your tears and through your hurt and through your pain. I remember the story about the man that, that the man had a dog the farmer had a dog and a mule and a wagon and and the man and the farmer and his dog was sitting on the on the seat and and of the wagon and the mule was pulling the wagon and they were going on down the road and out of nowhere here comes a tractor and the tractor boom broad size and t-bones them the dog went flying the horse dropped down and the farmer he fell off the wagon broke his leg broke his hip back spleen was broken he was in a bad shape. The dog was over there panting. The dog looked like he was just hanging on by, by the thread and the horse, the mule, all four legs were broken and here comes an old county sheriff. He comes riding up and he looks over the situation and he says, what happened? And the farmer said, man, we were just riding down the road and out of nowhere a tractor hit us and it just threw me off the wagon. I feel like every bone in my body is broken. He said, my dog over there he's just hanging on to life and man, my mule, I don't know what good he gonna be all four of his legs are broke the farmer uh, the uh, sheriff he went back to his car he got his shotgun out came back he looked at the dog the dog was panting looked like wasn't gonna make it he ch -ch boom he took the dog out uh, he walked over to the mule all four legs are broken uh, he looked at the mule the mule looked at him and no hope he just ch -ch Boom, took the mule out he walked over to the farmer he said how you feel he said I never felt better in all my life uh, look here, I don't care what you're going through. Don't you let the devil take you up out of here. Don't you? I, I feel bad, but I don't feel that bad. I'm depressed, but I ain't that depressed. I got a rough time in my life, but it ain't that rough. I'm hurting, but I ain't that hurt. Am I talking to anybody up in here? David said, they trying to kill me. David said, I'm depressed. I'm in great distress. But y'all talking about stoning me. Hold up here. Hold up. Uh, I'm getting ready to encourage myself in the Lord. Uh, I thought you were feeling bad, David, but I ain't feeling that bad. I'm feeling better every second. You better encourage yourself and give God a hallelujah or give God a thank you, Jesus, or give God a yes, Lord, in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your trouble, and watch and see if you make one step, the Lord will encourage you even more. The Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes we get down on ourselves. And then the enemy comes in and he wants to finish us all. You got to get to a place, brothers and sisters. I'm not going to help the devil destroy me. I'm not going to help the devil kill me. Ain't happening. Ain't going out like that. No kind of way. No kind of how. You got to wake up every day and see the possibilities of the Lord's and his promises being fulfilled in your life. You got to wake up every single morning and believe this is the day that God is going to turn it around. You got to wake up every morning and declare, I ain't talking about what happened yesterday or last Last week or last year, this is a brand new day, and this day starts the best days of my life. Am I talking to somebody that had to just muster up a little encouragement yourself? You called somebody, they ain't have time. You called your prayer partner, I'm tired of you. You called your brother, your sister, they ain't have no words for you, and you had to encourage yourself. Ain't no shame in encouragement. I told y'all a few weeks ago, you gotta tell yourself you look good. Stop waiting on somebody to 
encourage you. You done had five hairstyles in one day. Amen. Trying to get somebody to notice you. Start noticing yourself. Look in the mirror and say, you sure look good. Now, like I said, you got one, two. You sure a one, two, snagger, two. Good looking somebody up in here. You got to learn how to feel good about who you are and who God has made you. I ain't comparing myself with nobody. I'm comparing myself with who God has called me to be. So I'm not going to measure up to everybody. I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. But that's okay. Because I don't have to be everybody's cup of tea. Paul says being confident in this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in you. He is going to bring it to pass. Or he is going to manifest it. Or he is going to bring it to fruition. Or he is going to, I like this word, he's going to complete it. And if God is in the midst of completing something, that means that he's not done with you. That means that he's not through with you. Don't get God mixed up with people. People are not God. God is not people. Amen. Don't get mixed up because somebody done told you you might as well lay down and die. The devil is a liar. I ain't laying down and die. I'm getting up and I'm going to live. Uh, stop letting people think just because they walk out of your life, your life is over. Sometimes your life ain't begun until a Negro walk up out of your life. Sometimes instead of trying to keep people, you need to let them go. Put them on some skates and tell them skate on. You got to understand who you are in God. You got to understand who God has made you and who God has called you to be. I'm talking to about 500 of you all. You got to know what God is doing in your life. You've got to know the promises that he made to you in his word. And you've got to know, brothers and sisters, uh, that if it has not yet happened, uh, then it's got to be on the way. Uh, if you don't see it, uh, then he's still manufacturing it. Uh, if you don't have it, uh, then he still has yet to deliver it. But if God God made you the promise. You've got to hold on to the promise uh, and know that it's coming to pass. Uh, stop letting somebody disappoint you and you saying, that's it. I'm done. I ain't trusting nobody for the rest of my life. That's a bad place to be in where you can't trust nobody. Uh, life is not even fixed for you not to be able to trust somebody. Everybody got to trust somebody at some point in time. Uh, if them two jokers let you down, uh, don't worry about that. You just move that behind and move on past it uh, and learn from those lessons uh, and try to be a little more discerning uh, when you enter interactions and relations with people. Uh, but you can't a man think that everybody's no good uh, because five people are no good uh, and if everybody you done met ain't no good, uh, you still better know that God is good. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's good all the time uh, and all the time God is good. So watch this. When God makes us promises, those promises, the Bible says, are yea and amen. That means the promises of God are yes and it is so. If God says he's going to do it, then he's going to do it. Sometimes we get tired of waiting on God. Uh, but the Bible tells us that the visions of the Lord are for an appointed time. Doesn't tell us when, but it tells us what. And the what is an appointed time. The Bible says, and it shall speak in the end. That means before it's all said and done, it's going to speak. If God said he's going to heal you, he's going to heal you. If God says he's going to make a way, he's going to make a way. If God says he's going to bring you out, he's going to bring you out. Because if he gave you that word, uh, his word goes out. And the Bible says it does not come back void uh, until it has accomplished everything uh, that he sent it out to do. So if God gave you the word, you make sure that that's a word from God. Uh, and that word is going to speak. Uh, it's going to speak. Brothers and sisters. 
Jesus. I don't care who said it ain't going to happen. It's going to speak. If it's God's word, it's got to speak. If it's God's word, it's got to be true. If it's God's word, it cannot be a lie. If it's God's word, it's got to come to pass. If it's God's word, when it goes out, it's got to come back after everything it said has come to fruition. Am I talking to somebody up in here? It has to boggle your mind when you look at Israel. And when you look at Israel, there they are on the brinks of the promised land. They're on the brinks of a place, a man called Canaan. The Bible said they sent spies into Cana, and when they go in there, they come back with a report. Ten of them say uh, there are giants up in the land, uh, and we are but grasshoppers in their sight. Uh, two, Joshua and Caleb say, uh, we saw some big people over there, but more than the people we saw over there, we saw the promises of God. Uh, we saw vineyards that we have not planted. Uh, we saw houses that we have not built. Uh, we saw grapes that were so big, uh, it's going to take two or three of us just to carry a bunch of them where they need to go. But Israel, they did not have the faith to believe that God brought them out of Egypt to take them into the promised land. Now watch this. Moses, he declares unto the Lord, he said, Lord, there's some things that you have favored me with. God says, yes, Moses, I have favored you. He said, Lord, you have made me special. You made me special than anybody else on the face of the earth. God says, yes, Moses, I made you special because you are special. He said, there are prophets and there are kings that I speak to in visions and dreams, but you I speak to face to face. We know God is not talking about a physical face because God is a spirit and a spirit does not have a face. But God is saying, I speak to you directly. There is no prophet that brings you a word. Uh, there is no king that brings you a word. Uh, when I got something to say to you, Moses, I say it to your face. Uh, but Moses still is not satisfied. Uh, he says, Lord, uh, I want you to show me your glory. Uh, God says, Moses, be careful uh, because you don't know what you're asking. Uh, he said, Lord, uh, yes, I done seen a lot of things, uh, but I want to see your glory. Uh, and God is probably rehearsing with Moses. Uh, he said, Moses, why do you want to see my glory? Uh, you have not been able to handle the miracles uh, that I've done and wrought in Israel. Uh, here I came uh, and taught you uh, and I spoke to you from a mountain uh, through a burning bush. Uh, you went down into Egypt and I was there with you. Uh, you spoke to Pharaoh, one of the most powerful men of the earth, uh, as if he was a little boy. Uh, you said, God said, uh, let let my people go. You spoke with authority and I was right there with you. I performed miracles in your sight. I turned the rod into a serpent. I turned the Nile River into blood. I brought the locusts and I brought the caterpillars and I brought the flies and I sent boils and all kinds of pestilence in Egypt just to show them that I was with you. And then when you came up I out of Egypt. Uh, after the firstborn of every Egyptian died, uh, you stood at the Red Sea uh, and the people still didn't respect me. Uh, they wanted to go back to Egypt uh, where there were graves to be buried. Uh, I brought you out to live uh, and you're trying to go backwards and die. Uh, I told you to stretch a rod out uh, and the waters parted on both sides of the Red Sea. Uh, I dried up the Red Sea ground uh, with the breath of my nostrils uh, and everything dry and you walk on dry land. Uh, when you got to the other side, Egypt tried to come after you. Uh, and the same breath that I split the sea uh, I blew again uh, and the waters drowned in them. Uh, and here you are on the other side of the Red Sea uh, and you won't even go in and possess the land uh, that I gave you. Uh, 
Do you think I brought you out of slavery to die? Do you think I brought you out of slavery to still walk around like you don't know where you're going? The same me that brought you out of Egypt will be with you if you just go in there and defeat the enemy. The enemy is not going to give you nothing. You're going to have to take it from him. That's why the Bible said the kingdom suffered violent and the violent take it by force. And there's some promises that God has made to some of y'all. But you still in the bed watching reality TV and expecting God to deliver your promise on the doorstep. You better get up out the house and go after what God has declared unto you. Moses said, Lord, I I want you to see your glory. I want you to show me your glory. And the Lord is saying, I done showed you signs. I done showed you wonders. And you're still wandering like a hopeless people. Moses said, but Lord, just please show me your glory. The Lord said, all right, Moses, you want to see my glory. But let me warn you, to whom much is given, much is required. He said, I want you tomorrow, get up in the cleft of the mountain uh, and hide yourself in the cleft. Uh, he said, I'm coming by uh, at a certain time of the day. Uh, and when I come by, uh, I'm going to release my glory. Uh, he said, but you can't stand to see it uh, from head on. Uh, so when I come through, uh, I'm going to cover your face uh, and just let you get a glimpse uh, of the remnants of the weight of my glory. Uh, and the Bible says there Moses was uh, up in the cliff. Uh, I can hear God saying, Moses, I'm on my way. Uh, get back up in there. Uh, you don't want to be standing out when my glory come by. Uh, get back up in there. Uh, and the Bible said when God came by uh, up in the mountain uh, and God came down to visit Moses, uh, he said when God came by, uh, all the glory, uh, everything that God is, uh, it passed by that mountain. Uh, but what God had to do. He had to cover the eyes of Moses when the front part came through. And when God got a mile down the road, he released his hand from Moses' face to just let him see the remnants of his glory. You trying to see the glory of the Lord and you can't even pay your tithes. You trying to see the glory of the Lord and you can't even come to church on time. You got to be careful what you ask for. Can you handle the glory of God we deflate the glory of God we have a good service and people are dancing and people are running around the aisles and we say Lord have mercy the glory came in jumping and shouting the glory of God they dancing at the theater they dancing at the theater they dancing at the cover at the Beyonce concert moving and jumping ain't the glory of God the glory of God is bigger than a house. Uh, the glory of God is bigger than a car. Uh, the glory of God is bigger than a job. Uh, is there anybody uh, that say, Lord, if I don't see your glory, uh, just let me praise you for waking me up this morning. Uh, if I don't see your glory, uh, just let me bless you for keeping me in my right mind. Uh, stop reducing God uh, to bling bling in houses uh, and cars and jobs uh, and booze and booets. Uh, the glory the glory of God is bigger than you can ever imagine. Uh, the glory of God is bigger than you can ever see. Uh, the glory of God is bigger than you can ever experience. Uh, and I'm here to tell somebody, uh, if I never see the glory of God, uh, I'll just praise him for what he's doing right now. Uh, I'll praise him for waking me up this morning. Uh, I'll praise him for keeping me sound. Uh, I'll praise him for keeping me healthy. Uh, I'll praise him for being my God. I'll praise him for saving my soul. Is there anybody that will bless the Lord? Tell that neighbor I will bless the Lord. Tell that neighbor I will praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what come my way. It doesn't matter what I have to go through. Sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. But I'm here to tell you, the Spirit said, tell the people of God, 
it's not over. I don't care who's given up on you. I don't care who's walked out of your life. You better tell yourself it's not over. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how many ships have sailed. You better tell yourself it's not over. Paul says, you got to be confident of this very thing. That he which had begun a good work in you, he will complete it. Tell the neighbor he's going to finish it. It might take a while. It might take another season. But if God says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Can you wait on him? Can you trust in him? Let me close with this. Sometimes we lack patience. Because nobody wants to have patience when you're hurting. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You don't want to exercise patience when you're in pain. You don't want to exercise patience when you're going through a rough time. I have to work on my patience. I'm an impatient person. It's my nature. I like doing things quick, fast, in a hurry. I hate waiting at red lights. I ain't, by, I ain't by myself. I'm confessing. I hate red lights. I, I, and, 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 and they probably ain't red, but for 45 seconds, a minute maybe. I know they ain't red for three minutes or two minutes, but it just seems like it's forever. And I have to work on that when I'm at a street that has three lanes two lanes and a curve lane. If the curve lane is open, I'll always go around to the curve lane and be inching up. So as soon as it turns green, I can move on through. Because what I hate most than more than red lights is when you're behind two or three people and it turns green and they still wait. And you gotta blow the horn. Will you go please? So if there's an open lane, I'll get to the open lane, come up to the front. So it turn green, I can go. Now watch this. I've never been so impatient that I ran the light. Because there is no excuse that I could give. If an officer saw me do that, that he would say, oh, I see what happened. I see how you feel. I see what's going on. He's going to say, brother, you can't run the light. That's against the law. And unless he has mercy, I'm going to have to pay a heavy fine for running a red light. So it's painful as it is. I got to wait until it turns green. You got to believe the promises of God. Habakkuk says, and I'm done with this. The vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it's going to speak. Tell a neighbor, it's going to talk. You're going to see it. You might be laughing at me now, but in the end, I'm going to have the last laugh. Because I know what God said to me. He said, at the end, it shall speak, and it will not lie. And he said, though it tarry, and we ain't talking about hallelujah, 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 we ain't talking about that. Apostolics, we change everything. Though it tarry, tarry means delay. Though it takes some time. He says, wait on it. For it shall surely come. Oh, y'all not here. It shall surely come. All you got to do is wait on it. Don't be anxious. God made Abram, and I close with this, a promise. And Abram got tired of that red light. He and Sarah got tired of the red light. 
It had been 15 years since God told we're going to have a kid. We're going to have a child. We're going to have a son. And he said, sit at that red light. And Sarah said, you know what? Uh, you know, this light ain't going to never turn green. We need to run this light. And she called her handmaid, Hagar, and allowed her husband to go in and to give child sperm to her womb. And she said, well, she can have the child on my knees and it'll be my child. He ran the red light because they couldn't wait on God. And the world has been paying for that ever since. We've got turmoil in the Middle East. As long as there's been a Middle East. Because Abraham and Sarah couldn't wait on God. Brothers and sisters, you got to believe that regardless of how long you've been waiting, God will fulfill his promise. Tell that neighbor it's not over. Everybody stand and join hands with that neighbor. Lord, we bear witness on this day that your word is true. We bear witness that you are more than able not just to do what you said but to do exceedingly and abundantly all and above all that we can ask or even think. We pray now that you give us the grace to wait on you and to trust you while we wait. Remove the murmuring and the complaining from our lips and fill our hearts with praise and with joy knowing that what you have promised, you will fulfill. Now, as we leave this place on today, let us leave in a spirit of joy. Let us leave in a spirit of excitement. Let us leave with a spirit of expectation, knowing that the promise is on the way. Let us not doubt, let us not fear, but let us be confident in this very thing that is coming to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, I hope that word bless you on today. Who wants to be saved? Maybe you're at a place in your life where you've been believing God, but the wait has been so long. Your patience has grown thin. And you're getting to a place well, I don't believe God is going to do it. The devil is a liar. You have to believe that it ain't over until God says it's over. If you're not saved, if you're not baptized in his name, this is your time. This is your season. No, 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 no. Till God says it's over. Keep fighting. He is one. Until God says it's over, until God says it's over, keep fighting till the victory is won. It ain't over, it ain't over, until God says it's over, it ain't over. No, 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 no. Till 
until God says it's over. Until God says it's over. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Until your victory is won. It ain't over. It ain't over. Until God says. Come on, this is the last card. It ain't over. Until God says it's done. No, 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 no. Till God says. Until God says it's done. Keep fighting. Till your victory. Until God said it's over. Until God says it's it over. It ain't over. It ain't over. Until God says. Until God says it's no, 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 no. It ain't over. Until God said it's over. Until God said it's over. Keep fighting. Until God said it's over. Until God says it's over. It ain't over. over. It ain't over. Until God said it's over. Until God said it's over. No, 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 no. It ain't over. Until God said it's over. Until God said it's over.